we're going to start off. First chapter doesn't have a whole lot of issues there. The main thing we have to worry about, the main thing we have to worry about is significant figures. I mean, it is not a huge part, but it is still a significant part. How do we treat significant figures? Significant figures, remember, were a way of saying, how well do we know this number? How accurately can we have measured this number? When you're recording a balance, you're gonna record all the digits that are available on that balance. If you're recording something with markings, you're gonna go somewhere between the markings. Like uh, if I have a ruler that goes, oop, 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 and then say there's, there's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I know that's not perfect. And we had an object that oblong rectangle goes to here. When we measure this, we would measure it that, oh, it is somewhere between six and seven. And so when we're measuring that, it ends up being what? We have to say, we can definitely say it's six, but we'd have to say maybe it's 6.5. We'd be measuring it somewhere between the markings when it all said and done. That you, you can definitely say it's accurately six. You can approximate or estimation place that it is so, that is 6.5, but this estimation place will vary depending on who you are and who you ask. But hopefully you'll get that it's somewhere within some significance of 6.5, whether it's a standard deviation up or a standard deviation down, hopefully you get somewhere by 6.5. However, we cannot say that this is 6.53. There's no way we could say that. There's no way we can know that. So we have to limit our number to how accurately we can reasonably measure this. Now, recognizing significant figures are more important in lab work than they are on paperwork. Because, I mean, reading a value and reporting a value in the lab is where the issue typically comes up. Most times on homework, on paperwork, the starting number you have is going to determine the significant figures you get. So it's a little bit more straightforward. Now, how do we treat them and how do we lose and gain them? Well, when we add and subtract, there's the add and subtract. When we deal with those, we keep the, we keep the place value. And when we multiply and divide, we keep pure number. So what does that mean? If I have a number like 62.39 and I'm adding that to 3.275. On all these situations, I know it's kind of weird. We're going to line this up like we would in grade school. We're going to line them up at the decimal point so we can do the mental math. Now, when I say keep the place value, we have to remember that where there is a number, there is a significant figure. Where there isn't a number, there is not a significant figure. So right here, the, 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 that's the tenths place, that's the hundredths place, that's the thousandths place. We have a big X on that. We have an unknown value. So when we add these together, add these together, this is 5x, that is 6, carry the 1, 5, so that becomes 6, that becomes 5, and that becomes 6. So we have 65.66 unknown. 
No, that's, but because this is five plus X, we could round that up unknown. So our actual value gets reported at 65.67. However, the idea here is that this number is plus or minus 0 0.01. We don't know if it's going to be one up or one down. That's going to be what we do. It's going to be within one significant figure of that result. I'll do another problem like that in a minute, but let's do multiplication and division. How do we keep the pure number? If I say 32.3 times 5.8003. When I do my multiplication, I need to record how many digits we have. One, two, three. And I have one, two, three, four, five. So five, six, eight. So we keep, we're going to do this multiplication and we're going to keep the lower of the two. We keep the lower of the two sig figs. We record there's three sig figs in the top, two sig figs and uh, five sig figs in the bottom number. So when we write this number, I do the multiplication, I get 187.34969. So I'm going to count from the front three sig figs. One, two, three, and everything after that is going to be a rounding error. So we're going to round all that down. So the number I would report is 187. Eight seconds. Try another couple problems. Same thing with subtraction as addition. Fifty two point eight three minus minus uh. 49.1, line those up. We have to write, mark down where our place is. So we, this is our X. So I subtract this. Three minus X, we don't know what that is. Eight minus one is seven. Nine, two minus nine, we have to carry that. So that becomes three. And then this becomes zero. Now, so we have 3.7 and 3 minus x. We don't know what that is. So this is going to round down. So the number I would report is 3.7. We could accurately know this within plus or minus 0 0.1 decimal place. So this could be 3.7 round up, 3.7 round down. We don't know. Don't know. But all we can report is 3.7 because that's as accurate as we're going to know this. Same thing division as multiplication. 32.9. If I divide that by 1.5. Three sig figs there. I have two sig figs here. So the number we get, if I do this, the math, I would get 21.9333, essentially 93 repeating. However, I have to record two sig figs, counting from the front. One, two, so that means I round that up. The number I would report is 22. If I have to do a multi-step problem that requires addition and, sub and multiplication, like uh, there's a parentheses, I'm gonna do the first thing, and then I'm gonna do the second thing. Keep in mind, 
can either round at the very end or round in the middle, and it will still get it within plus or minus. Like the, it'll either be one too high or one too low, depending on whether you round early or round late, but it usually is not going to make that big of a difference. It'll be within the standard deviation. So Now, one other thing on significant figures is that you some is there are things like pure numbers, absolute numbers that do not have significant figures. So when you do multiplication with these pure numbers, you will not lose any significant figures. Pure numbers are numbers are like numbers we can count. They're either countable, like I could count how many eggs were laid. There's not a fractional number. We can't have a half an egg. Uh, or there are conversions. Like one of the most common conversion you'll see is going from, say, a meter to a millimeter. So there's a thousand millimeters in one meter. So when you do this conversion, you might be like, oh, one significant figure, maybe one significant figure or maybe four significant figures, depending on how you do this conversion, if you put a decimal place in there. But the idea here, when I do a conversion, that's going to be a pure number and it's not going to reduce my significant figures. If I want to turn... 52 meters into 52.3 meters into centimeter into millimeters. I can just go 52.3 meters, and there's one meter and a thousand millimeters, and my number is going to be 5230 millimeters. I'm not going to round it to 5,000. I'm gonna, not going to round it to 5,200. I can keep the whole number because this is a pure number conversion. Other pure number conversions that are maybe less obvious include things like there is 12 inches in one foot. It's a pure number conversion. It's not two sig fig conversion. It's unlimited sig fig conversion. Another one that's a little bit less obvious is 2.54 centimeters in one inch. That's a absolute number conversion. So these numbers, when we do a lot of conversions, they're not typically going to produce our values. Only measurable numbers are going to reduce our values. So things like molar masses probably aren't going to reduce our value. Things like constants aren't usually going to reduce our sig figs because constants and molar masses can usually be taken out to more significant figures, more significant digits than we started with. So if I'm going, for example, like using ideal gas equation PV equals NRT, the significant digits are going to come within these values, not this guy, not the R, because R is 0 0.08206. That way there's four sig figs. Unless I'm reporting the pressure as 1.0000 ATMs or something like that, it's probably not gonna be, we're probably not gonna lose any significance from our R value. That's just a quick review of significance.